in the early 1950s of the first Aramaic fragments of First Enoch, which were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, changed entirely the way theologians had approached these ancient legends about fallen guardian watcher angels copulating with females. Suddenly, there were all these texts in the Dead Sea Scrolls and discovered in Ethiopia telling this legend, which seemed to be unanimous amongst Jews during the time before Christ and amongst Christians during the time of Christ and in the centuries to follow leading up to the time of St. Augustine. Ever since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, Bible scholars now recognize that before Christ and in the time of the early church, it was almost unanimously believed that what's going on in Genesis 6 was in fact an interbreeding between fallen watcher angels and sinful women, creating these hybrid giants that were very wicked, and that this was the occasion for the flood. So it seems that the Genesis depiction of a water genocide was in reference to this corruption of an angel-human species. And certainly, First Enoch is following that idea. If St. Jude and St. Peter and Second Peter considered First Enoch as theologically true, this would mean that at least one or two of the apostles believed that the Enoch legend of the watcher angels being sent to Tartarus because they had deceived humans and copulated with them. Regardless of whether St. Jude and St. Peter believed the Enochic watcher angel legend, we know for a fact that they applied its teaching as a doctrinal paradigm for the lay people in their church during the apostolic era. What they're teaching in Jude and in 2 Peter only makes sense if their audience, the lay people, the recipients of these letters, understand the background story. And it seems that they understood this in terms of what we see in the book of Enoch, that long ago, these guardian watchers copulated with women and produced giants.